Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah. Vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve rasuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. My dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ve barakat. May Allah be with you and with your families and I hope all of you are in a great state of iman and health and happy times. And uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity to be at your service and to have a few moments so we can remind ourselves and refresh ourselves with some of the teachings of our Creator. And while we are at the luxuries of our homes, Allah has provided all this technology for us that we can benefit and we can inshallah, uh, you know, help each other, remind each other and may Allah uh, enable us to do it in the best ways, to uh, present it in the best ways and to benefit from it in the best ways. And may Allah, you know, uh, put his barakah in our hearts, in our minds, in our ears, in our eyes. And may Allah count this as a great good deed for all of us and especially for the organizers. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So with that, we can start, inshallah. Uh, we will be covering verses 10 to 18 in Surah Al-Ankabut, which is Surah number 29 in the Quran. Uh, surah Ankabut uh, is a Meccan Surah which focuses on belief system and building the faith. And it, uh, uh, you know, there are so many surahs covering this topic because it is very important. And no matter how much belief we have, uh, we still need to continuously strengthen our belief and our faith. So we should not feel like, okay, I already have belief. I'm a Muslim. I don't need anything about belief. We always need to keep our faith strong and to make it stronger and stronger. And so uh, the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with our uh, weaknesses, with our weaknesses in faith and belief and many other things are affected by faith. So uh, let us inshallah uh, focus on what Allah has for us in these uh, verses. Uh, the verse number 10 says, uh, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله فإذا أذي في الله جعل فتنة الناس كعذاب الله ولئن جاء نصر من ربك ليقولن إنا كنا معكم أوليس الله بأعلم بما في صدور العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى explains uh, the scenario that some people when uh, they declare faith but then how Allah establishes uh, the reality of their faith and how shaky their faith could be. Uh, the verse, uh, the translation of the verse is that from the people, from amongst the people uh, there are some or there is someone who may say that we believe in Allah. We have believed in Allah. We have attained to faith. But when they are seeing some sufferings in the path of Allah, when they are seeing some hardships in the path of Allah, which have been caused by uh, people on them, they look at it as a punishment from Allah. They think that, okay, this punishment is, came from Allah. You know, I gave up my this and that, and I believed in the deen of Islam in Allah. Now I'm seeing suffering and punishment. Uh, so uh, 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 that's the conclusion that they make that, you know, this faith brought me this, this sufferings. And then on the other hand, when Allah says, Wala in rabbik, If a, a help comes from uh, your Lord, if victory comes from your, your Lord to them, then they say, inna kunna ma'akum. Indeed, we have been with you, O Prophet, we have been with you and we have been together with you and so we are with you, we will be with you. 
Awalaysa Allahu bi'alama bima fi sudur al-alameen. Allah is asking that people know. Do they not know that Allah is very well aware of what is in the chests of the whole creation? In the basically what is inside, what are the inner thoughts of people, or what they uh, already have in mind and what they are hiding. Don't they know that Allah is their creator and Allah is, has this knowledge of unseen and the knowledge of inside of everybody's thoughts? So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the scenario and the situation of those people who claim belief, but their belief is either weak or they are just new into their faith or they are not true believers, they are hypocrites. Uh, or they are people that, uh, you know, they just like to go based on the blow of the wind, you know, uh, based on their worldly benefits and based on uh, whichever side is uh, heavier and has more uh, kind of weight. Those people, you know, they make decisions based on their world experiences and based on um, certain things that are apparent to them as loss and win and gain uh, so they come and join and, and say we are believers but uh, when allah allows some hardships for them to reach as a test as a test they are being tested for their faith then they look at that as a punishment from allah uh, from allah and they stop the belief they change their faith they change their uh, commitment and dedication and go back to disbelief or they stop believing. And this is uh, in line with the per very first uh, verse of this surah. You know, this surah is started with a verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَحَسِّبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ that pe do, do people think that when they say, I am a believer, we are believers, and we are very strong believers and good believers, Allah says, do they think that I'll leave them alone and I will not you know, test them, I will not put them through some trials? And the second verse, Allah says that indeed we have tested people before you and we will test these people for what purpose? So that Allah can make evident who is the truthful people who are the liars. And here also the second verse says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make it known. Allah wants to make it known who are the people who are true believers and who are the people who are hypocrites and who are just claiming that they are believers, but they are not, or they are really not true believers or full believers and they have just you know, I uh, think that a belief is just this and that based on certain worldly benefits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically explains to us many things in these two verses that faith and belief system is not just a matter of lip service. Faith and belief system in the path of Allah is a path of some sacrifices. Yes, there are all kinds of benefits, inshallah, such as having getting peace, getting hope, getting courage, getting confidence, having a focused life, having a vision in life, having a direction in life. These are some great, great benefits of this life that believers receive that you cannot purchase any of them for millions and billions of dollars. Allah gives that for free to true believers. These are some benefits. But on the other hand, there will be some hardships, some sufferings in the path of Allah. There will be some tests and trials because this life is all about tests and trials. And tests and trials will actually establish the faith. Tests and trials will make it evident that you have really faith and belief. And tests and trials actually make the belief stronger. Tests and trials actually help the person to achieve much more and to gain more and to really become better believer and better human being. So tests are all favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because tests are bringing out the potential that you have inside you. If you have a positive potential, Allah will bring that positive potential out. 
uh, as uh, one place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, you know that وَلِيُّبْ لِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْهُ بَلَاءً حَسَنًا that Allah will test the believers with a good test that, that the good things that are inside them Allah will bring it out for example a believer wants to you know do some great things and some good things and say Ya Allah if you give me an opportunity I'll serve like this I'll help like this I'll sacrifice this and that Allah gives them opportunities that all that belief and all those intentions all those thoughts come out and become actions and become evidence for them in the next life so they can get real rewards for it much more rewards than just having a mere intention and on the other hand, if some uh, people harbor any kind of negative thoughts and negative intentions in their hearts, and they are just, you know, claiming faith, and and uh, uh, and, and and they are also uh, saying that, you know, once I have power, once I have this, I will do this, this, I'll I'll kill no, so many people, I'll destroy these many people, I'll put these people in jail, I'll do this, this. So Allah will give them that opportunity also, as Allah says in another place, Allah says that he will test you to bring out what is inside your chest and to purify what is in your heart. So whatever is in your heart, it will come out. It will become an action, good or bad, it will come out. And that's the purpose of test. So test is again a favor of Allah to bring our potentials out and give us the opportunity to serve. And alhamdulillah, uh, we can see that tests are meant to help us grow, to help us develop, to help us help, help us become better. But for people who have bad intentions, for people who want to do bad things and harm others, the tests are not. The tests are actually to bringing out those bad realities for them and it will be counted against them and the tests will prove what is their real intention because they can they may give some good speeches and they may claim certain you know uh, privileges and others uh, but when it comes to reality of actions then allah will establish for them that these people are actually liars and these people have just fooled uh, others or you even in this world allah will make it known and especially in the day of judgment the evidences will make it known that these people were not the uh, real uh, truthful people. So the tests are really good and meant good. And uh, uh, then the next verse, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are some more points that I may come back if we have time, inshallah. Um, so we can cover all the verses. And the next verse, Allah says, وَلَا يَحْمِلُنَّ the meaning is that uh, these people they say that uh, that uh, okay actually in the end of uh, okay I missed the one verse I have to read verse 12 verse and I was reading verse 13. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّبِعُوا سَبِيلَنَا وَلْنَحْمِلْ خَطَايَاكُمْ The disbelievers, they come and tell the believers and they say that, you know, follow our path or stop your belief, come to our path or come back to the disbelief that you were a disbeliever, come back to our path. Why? They say, وَلْنَحْمِلْ خَطَايَاكُمْ we will carry this your sins we will carry your your sins meaning that we will we will be responsible for your sins and allah says the reality is that they are not able to carry the sins of uh, you uh, these people at all in shay nothing at all they are liars. They are just lying. Uh, they are fabricating the, this thing. So Allah explains the situation that some people leave the faith or some people fail in the tests of life because of the deception of some others, especially disbelievers. 
that these believers they always want to come to believers and they want to deceive them and they want to manipulate them and they want to get them out of faith especially if they see some of their people they have come and accepted islam and belief system of truth then they will think of all kinds of plots to come to bring these people back and when especially when they see that okay these people are being tested or these people are going through some hardship and, and uh, they, then they think that this is a good opportunity to go and uh, bring them back and they will say look you know you guys are going through so much hardship and so much you know difficulties and sufferings come on you know come back we are ready to accept the responsibility of this sin they are saying we are ready <laughs> and allah explains that they will not they are liars why because Allah's system is a system of adil and fairness and justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives very many formulas that nowadays even in the courts of law they have learned from Quran and they have put it in many uh, laws. One of the principles of those laws of justice, Allah says, وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى That no one can carry the sin of somebody else. Meaning that, if somebody does, does a sin, you cannot say that, okay, you will be forgiven a day of judgment, and instead I will be responsible and I'll be punished, and you, you will not be asked about it. Allah says, no, that person will be responsible for himself, and he cannot, you cannot remove his sin. Uh, uh, you. Uh, and this uh, formula has been repeated many times in the Quran, in Surah Najm, in Surah. Uh, and uh, number 17 is Ubu Bani Israel, Asra, Asra, and, and many other places uh, that no one can do so. Why? Because just like uh, imagine, you know, in the courts of law uh, today, even in here in America, if someone say, you know, goes and kills somebody and he asks somebody else, come on, you come with me and both of us will kill this person. And then he, and both of them kill a person and then they go in the court of law and in front of the judge he says that listen you know i was actually the one who told this guy that uh, go come and help me in killing somebody so now uh, uh, you know I, I i don't want him to be punished i just want him myself to be punished you know is that possible would the would the court and judge accept this kind of thing the judge will punish both of them because both of them you know, uh, contributed to the crime and and uh, and they will be punished for it. Um, and in fact, there will be two crimes for this uh, initial person uh, who instigated the second person because of one crime that he killed somebody and one other crime that he brought somebody else and uh, made them also uh, to uh, contribute in killing. So two crimes and the other person also, of course, will get his punishment because knowingly he joined uh, this person in this crime. So now this is just in this world which justice is done only partially, but in the, in the day of judgment where justice will be done in absolute manner and in full manner, how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave this person? You know, Allah will punish both of them. And then Allah explains here in the next verse, that these people who were the instigators and who were the, the, the disbelievers who wanted to bring other people out of faith, actually, they will carry their own sins and they will carry the sins of those other people also. So their sins will be twice the uh, size. And also, uh, uh, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains this in Surah Al-Nahl, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِيَحْمِلُوا أَوْزَارَهُمْ كَامِلَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةً وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُدِلُّوا بِغَيْرِ عَلْمٍ يُدِلُّونَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ عَلْمٍ That Allah says that they will carry their full load themselves and they will carry the load uh, of other people also that they have put to sense. So they will carry the load of the second person but without removing the load from the second person, without removing the sin of the second person. This is the reality of what they had forged. You know, they had forged, they had forged a lie 
we are gonna uh, carry your sin, no problem, come on, do it, uh, we'll carry your sin. Uh, Allah explains that this is not true and they will pay for it themselves. And, and the Prophet ﷺ also beautifully explained this concept in a very beautiful hadith and that's reported in Muslim. That the Prophet ﷺ said, if you have intention of doing something good and you help people to do something good, you know, you, you help someone, you, you help somebody to do something good, you will get the reward of doing good the reward of uh, the good that the other person has done. So, for example, you teach somebody how to pray. Now, every time that person offers the prayer, you get the reward of that good deed of that person without reducing the good deed of that person. So, that person gets the reward, and you get the, the same reward without reducing the reward of that person. And on the other hand, if you teach somebody something bad, if you help somebody in the, in the bad way and uh, put them in the wrong path and you misguide them, then you will get the sin of yourself and the sin that this person is doing the, the, when that person uh, does that sin, every time that person does that sin, the same amount of sin comes to you in addition to your own sin. So this is the reality that not only you cannot save somebody else and you cannot remove their sins, but you get double uh, punishment for uh, this lie that you made and for getting somebody else into the wrong path, and taking him out of grief. Now, uh, we Muslims sometimes, uh, we may not have seen a lot of other people to say that, you know, come on, leave your belief and leave your faith. Uh, they will not say explicitly, but the propaganda, the media, the uh, you know uh, the, the way uh, different things are uh, presented by disbelievers, by atheists, by others, you know, they will make the path of Islam sound difficult. They make the path of Islam sound you know harsh and and sometimes uh, uh, giving some uh, undue examples, and you know they make up things so that Muslims are discouraged to leave this path. Or sometimes we may have seen some other people who so-called Muslims, you know, who say that, come on, brothers, you don't have to fast in this uh, time or say, I'll take your sin, don't fast. Or don't pray, you know, I'll, I'll take your sin. Yes, some, some young people that I was, he was teaching Islam at one point at one place, they came and told me that my father is saying that, Basan, you don't have to get up for prayer in the early morning. And uh, I will accept your sin. I will accept your sin in front of God. Don't get up in, in that early because you have to go to school and then you will not be able to focus and concentrate in your school. And uh, all day you will be, your sleep will be destroyed and all that. They told me <laughs> clearly that this is what my father is saying. This was a high school student, you know. So uh, unfortunately, we have these kind of people among ourselves who try to take us away from them path of righteousness and they claim why they say that for two reasons one that they do not believe in the truth of islam fully or completely or uh, at all or and second they don't believe in the next life that next life there is punishment there is a judgment and i will not be able to uh, absolve myself and all that so that, that these these are the uh, basis usually for those people who say Come on, don't worry. And one person actually, one time uh, I was fasting, uh, you know, in Ramadan uh, many, many years ago. Uh, this person told me that, come on, break your fast. You know, it's very hot. It's summer. You know, drink some water. Uh, I'll pay for your sins. And, and this was so-called a Muslim, you know. And, and uh, the, this kind of people are around us, uh, unfortunately. So uh, we have to be really careful uh, with uh, such uh, uh, people around us in workplace or other places or through the TV and media and other things that we can easily, you know, be uh, fooled by or deceived by, and uh, and we cannot defend ourselves in the day of judgment uh, that oh because of so and so I did this because of so and so I did. 
Okay, so now uh, with this, uh, inshallah, uh, we have some more points, but if we have time, we'll come back and uh, let's move to the next verse. Uh, the next uh, a few verses uh, talk about uh, some uh, realities of the history. The Quran is so beautiful, it's so practical. Every time it gives some concepts, then it takes us to history and gives us some examples of history so that it shows us that this is a practical path that people have followed it. Now, uh, there were some verses before this verse that uh, Allah was, was speaking in this surah that, uh, you know, uh, some people, they think that they can overcome our plan, uh, but they cannot and they will uh, fail. Uh, and also uh, the disbelievers, how they would not listen, on how they would come up with uh, excuses, uh, but how they will pay finally and how they will be punished. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this respect, uh, in, the, in the respect of last few verses and more verses before it, now gives the examples of uh, Nuh alayhi salam and Ismail Ibrahim alayhi salam. And uh, the example of Nuh alayhi salam is explained very briefly, uh, but the example of Nuh uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, with some details, but we'll cover only a couple of verses of it. Uh, the example of Nuh alayhi salam starts with verse 14. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا فَأَخَذَهُمُ التُّوفَانُ وَهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ since our time is uh, almost over, so I'll be very brief in this. That Allah says that indeed we have sent Nuh alayhi salam to his people. We sent Nuh alayhi salam to his people. And he lived among them for 1,000 years minus 50, or except 50, which means 950 years. And then this storm came and, and uh, seized uh, these people of Nuh alayhi salam while they were in the state of wrongdoing, while they were doing wrongs, wrong. فَأَنْجَيْنَا هُوَ أَصْحَابَ السَّفِينَةِ وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That we, Allah says, we saved Nuh alayhi salam and we saved uh, his companions, uh, uh, the companions in the ark, uh, and we made that uh, event or that boat that the ark as a sign for uh, all the uh, creation. So Allah here speaks about the uh, story of Nuh alayhi salam, that how Nuh alayhi salam, you know, uh, invited his people for a long time. Nuh alayhi salam lived for 950 years among his people as a prophet. So the age of Nuh alayhi salam could be much more than 950 years. He could have lived 1,000 years easily because first uh, few years until he became mature and he became a prophet. And then after that, he lived 950 years. And then after 950 years, then these people were drowned. And then Nuh alayhi salam left for some more time to establish the truth and to, uh, you know, those new people that were around him uh, that uh, through Islamic society was established by him. So much, much more years, at least a thousand years or so. And it may sound a little difficult for people to accept that how could he live 950 or 1000 years, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believe in the all powerful God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the infinite power, it's very easy. And in fact, uh, some uh, uh, scholars even say that the generation of those times lived long uh, like that, uh, many generations. Uh, so uh, he lived that long, but his people did not listen to him and rejected him to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished all those people and uh, the flood came and they were drowned, but Allah saved Nuh alayhi salam and his uh, companions, his believers, believing companions, and also uh, the boat. Uh, so Allah made this uh, event and the uh, uh, ark, a big sign. Uh, most of us should be familiar with the story, so I move on. Uh, and the next verse, uh, two verses, is about Ibrahim alayhi salam. That, uh, Allah says, Wa Ibrahim is called a kaumi and Mudullaha wa tafu, Zalikum Kairul lakum in Kuntum Talamun. That Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he said to his people that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be servant of Allah, and be conscious of Allah, and be mindful of Allah, this is better for you if you understand. 
So Ibrahim alayhi salam in simple terms tell people that, hey, if you believe in Allah, if you are conscious of Allah, this is good for you. This is good for this life for you. This is good for next life for you. You're, no one else will benefit you. Yourself will benefit first from this, that people should understand that Islam is good for ourselves. At first, you know, uh, and any believer who believes, we cannot say that, oh, you know, people should be... Uh, grateful to me that I'm a Muslim and I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, you should be grateful to Allah that Allah guided you and now we are doing something for Islam and for the service of Allah. So uh, it is good for ourselves as long as we are believers and we have taqwa. إِنَّمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْثَانَ وَتَخْلُقُونَ إِفْكَ Indeed, uh, the Ibrahim alayhi salam told these people that what you guys are worshipping, they are just, you know, these... Uh, uh, false idols and these are idols that you're worshiping and you guys have made uh, lies about these uh, uh, these uh, idols you know you call these idols as intercessors you call, call these idols as deities as gods you call them as daughters of god you call them a son of god you call this 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 you know none of them they are all lies lies that you have made these are fabrications even if you say this is a symbol of god god never said that i have a symbol you know uh, so don't make up these lies that Ibrahim alayhi salam told them. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا فَابْتَغُوا إِنَّ اللَّهِ رِزْقًا فَعْبُدُوهُ وَشْكُرُوا لَهُ إِلَيْهِ تَرْجَعُونَ That Ibrahim alayhi salam told them that, look, you know, these things that you are worshipping and you are seeking help from, they are not able to give you anything. They are not able to give you any sustenance, any kind of uh, provisionings, any kind of uh, needs of your life. They cannot fulfill and give to you. Uh, why don't you worship Allah? That everything is with Allah, that all of your risk is with Allah, all of your you know, needs are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you uh, worship Allah, Allah will provide for you and be grateful to Allah for what he has already given to you. And... Uh, uh, my, uh, I, uh, the screen now moved and uh, I, I cannot see. Uh, and eventually you will turn back to him. And eventually you will turn back to him. So worship someone that already created you or already has provided so much for you and will continue to provide more for you and will fulfill all of your needs and will come to save you when uh, uh, when you turn to him and from many problems and issues. And also eventually you will go to him for accountability and your eternal life will be dependent on him. Why don't you worship someone uh, uh, like Allah, someone who is really your creator? So you can see the logic of Ibrahim alayhi salam, so beautiful, so profound and so deep compared to you know the logic that those people have for the worship of those uh, idols you know uh, and these these prophets really teaches us so much uh, so much wisdom so much communication the dawah that uh, how we should present and how we should explain the truth and islam and subhanallah ibrahim alayhi salam uh, was an ummah as allah called them you know uh, uh, like a ummah by himself the way he uh, uh, conducted himself and the way he established Tawheed and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also these lessons were, of course, for Arabs, uh, indirectly for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That, you know, they uh, were resisting Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah tells them that, look, Nuh alayhi salam, you know, these people for 950 years resisted, eventually they uh, were uh, uh, destroyed and you guys better listen. And also Allah was telling Muslims that be patient. You have only had a few years of resistance. There's a lot to talk about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Any questions, I'll be happy to, inshallah. So let's start with the first question. Um, in verse 12, uh, we learn about the importance of good company. Because in this verse, the disbelievers are trying to influence the believers into uh, going in a wrong way. Can you give us a little bit of advice on how we should be choosing the company that we keep? Uh, what criteria should we be using so that the company we keep is really going to make a good influence on us? 
Um, you know, this is a question that would be obviously beneficial for the youth, but I think for, for all of us, regardless of our age. Yes, it's a very, very uh, and uh, the verse was talking about people around them who were taking people out of belief. Uh, so the people that we are in touch with, the people that we hang out with, the people that we usually visit and spend time with, definitely has a major impact on our lifestyles, on our personalities, on our habits, on our, you know, uh, many things that we do. So it is extremely important uh, to choose our friends uh, based on certain criteria. Uh, and we should really think about it that the people that we are hanging out with, are they really benefiting us in any way in the real meaning of benefit? or are they harm us? You know, there's criteria, of course, uh, about uh, friends and neighbors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one verse says that, you know, people will, in the judgment, they will, you know, uh, take their, put their fingers inside their mouth and say, I wish I did not take this person as a khalil, as a friend, you know, and they will show that much regret. And the Prophet sallallahu also explained a lot of things about choosing your friend that sometimes if you choose a friend, they give some parables of like, uh, you know, uh, getting someone that uh, some fruits that will help you with benefit and some oranges and on the other and some uh, blacksmith and others that you get close to and their smoke and others will affect you. Uh, so you give different kind of parables that the essence of the hadith was that what kind of choice of friends you have and, and people that you hang out with. Because no matter how much we think that, no, you know, uh, 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 I am my own person and this and that, you know, they will affect us. The only reasons uh, for this is that a close family members that we cannot separate from them and we cannot, uh, you know, uh, cut our relations that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, has explained this, Salih that is very important to keep the blood ties and to keep the close family members. We have to stay in touch with them no matter what and, uh, and trying to help them and trying to benefit them, but not to listen to them, to their wrong views and wrong thoughts. But other people that we choose as friends, we have to be really selective and we have to make sure that either we are influencing them in a positive way or they will not influence us. And it's the moment we realize that they are influencing as we better stop that relationship with them. And uh, uh, they can make us or they can make us. And this, and this is important for our children, especially for our youth, for our family members, that we should share this, these concepts uh, with them that, you know, why don't you hang out with someone who reminds you about your prayer time? Why don't you hang out with someone that reminds you about next life? Why don't you hang out with somebody that, you know, you see their appearance, their dress code, there are certain things that also helps you to think about it and you want to follow them. Not with those people that you want to you know, dress like them or talk like them or act like them or don't even think about prayer or anything. You know, that affects you. So for us also, uh, as parents, uh, this is extremely important that we have to question the nature of people that we are dealing with. That styles of the people that we are dealing with. You know, as a Dai, we want to be in touch with anybody to help them, but not in a way that we can be affected by them. And inshallah, we all need to check our friendships, our relationships uh, based on this kind of criteria. Jazakallah, Karen. Um, in the last verse that we studied today, verse 18, um, it was mentioned that the duty of the Messenger وسلم, is simply to provide a clear notification. Um, what is meant by a clear notification? And is this responsibility only for the Messenger وسلم, or do we have a responsibility as individuals also? Uh, yes, in verse that we did not cover, it talks about uh, that point, uh, uh, and, and it's important for all of us uh, that when we uh, 
work in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, our job as a, is to be a dia, to be an inviter, to be a caller. Our job is not to be a judge about people. And our job is also done when we do our delivery in the right in a wise way as much as possible and we deliver it in a clear way and also in a, a proper way uh, as long as we do that then uh, our we don't have to worry about the results of that how much why this person listen to me why this that person didn't accept me uh, uh, was you know uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this a lot in many many parts of Quran about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that sometimes even the Prophet himself was getting concerned. You know, he was concerned in the sense that maybe I'm not doing my job properly. Maybe I'm not presenting this message in a better way that people are rejecting this beautiful message. Why these people are rejecting such a meaningful and such a beneficial message? And uh, so Allah was assuring him uh, time after time that, listen, you're okay. You're doing your job right. Your job is only to pass the message. And that's it. You don't worry about the results. The results in our, are in our hands. Why? Because Allah has the knowledge of the hearts of people. Allah knows why this person did not accept and what was the motivation, what was the incentive behind it. So leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah knows who is really uh, uh, inclined to believe and who is not inclined to believe. But since we as human beings, we do not know other person whether this person is really inclined or not so we give the benefit of doubt to people and we you know pass the message and we try to do our job of ibla'ah in ways but in the meantime we should not lose hope and we should not also uh, worry that why this person did not uh, accept the message you know keep going and inshallah at some point it will click in their mind and they will get it and so if, uh, the message of this verse for us is to do our job in the best ways and make sure that we are doing it the right way. And we should be also flexible with methodology and others as long as Sharia allows us uh, that we are doing it in the proper way and leave the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the best judge and the one who understands the, the, the intentions uh, and at the end he will be asking them why they will not accept and he will, he will not ask us why you uh, could not convince them. Jazakallah khair. So for those of us who are involved in the work of Dawah, inviting to the truth, the lesson of Nuh alayhi salam is very central to, you know, getting some inspiration, getting some motivation, 950 years is a very long time to persevere in the work and only a few people uh, accept the, the truth. Can you review a few lessons and a few pieces of motivation and inspiration that we can get from this 950 years that Nuh al-Islam spent in the work of Dawah um, so that we can become maybe a little, show a little bit more humility uh, and uh, ex, you know, understand the the importance of the work, inshallah. Yes, inshallah, I'll try. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, the example of Nuh alayhi salam is a very outstanding example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches the rest of humanity after Nuh alayhi salam about him that, look, one of my servants, I gave him that much life, and he worked so hard, so sincerely, and so patiently, and he did not give up until the end of uh, uh, the time that I had given him. And in a long time of 950 years, which is difficult for many of us to even imagine, a few people only accepted his message, and most of the people rejected him. So those of us in the path of Allah and we are trying to help other people to uh, understand the message of Allah by our uh, actions, by our delivery, we really can get not only inspired, 
but we get, can get so many lessons from it. That we, first of all, should be ready to continue our job. We should accept some sacrifices. We should be through perseverance and patience in this path. We should truly, you know, be sure about the future of it. That regardless of the problems that we face, regardless of how many issues and, and barriers that are in front of us, in the long term, inshallah, I'll be successful in the eyes of Allah. Regardless of how much suffering I receive, I will be rewarded for it. Regardless of how much people talk ill of me and against me, and they are trying to assassinate my character, they are trying to label me as this and that, as long as with Allah, I have a clear slate, with the best of my ability, that's what counts, and that's what is enough for me. Teaches us that life is all about tests and trials. Life is not about results. Next life is about results, rewards and punishments. Life is all about tests and trials. So all of our life is full of trials, and the fact that we do all of this is a test that how much we're really understanding this concept that I'm being tested and other people are being tested every time. I am offering uh, the message to someone. I am being tested how I am delivering it. And the other person is being tested how they are reacting, how they are behaving, how they are receiving or rejecting. You know, they are being tested. So in this test process, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala measures the performance of both sides and monitors everybody and records everybody through the angels. and. Uh, Everything is basically for the benefit of believers and everything will be against the disbelievers and those people who have bad intentions or uh, wrongdoers. And uh, this path, really the path of justice for the society, for, 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 for oneself, that you're standing for justice, justice because you're telling people to believe in your creator to worship your creator who has a right on you. It is just and fair to worship Allah. It is just and fair to recognize the, the rights of Allah, the role of Allah. So standing for justice, injustice, injustice standing for truth, standing for uh, benefit of the society is something that we should be proud of in the positive meaning of pride. We should really continue and not give up. We, yes, we are human beings. But sometimes we may become tired. So, yes, it is possible that we may sometimes may become weak. Yes, sometimes it's possible that we may lose our motivation. But make sure that we have the right tools around us, the right resources around us, the right friends around us, the right movement around us, that they can you know, take our hand and remind us and refresh us. We should be part of some program study, we should be part of some uh, study guide programs that we continuously we are reminded and refreshed. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us daily prayers as such an institution that five times a day we should remind ourselves and refresh ourselves. Allah has given us the Juma prayers, Friday prayers that we should continuously energize ourselves through the khutbahs and through the message. Allah has given us all kinds of other opportunities and those kind of friends and people that we can select to be around us, and be part of these kind of movements and groups, or active groups of Muslims, so that we can really uh, continue. If shaitan comes to us and overcomes us for a moment or for a few days or a few weeks, we can get out of from that situation and continue our job, our mission, and we go with, inshallah, full energy and accelerators get the energy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to do our job. So there are all kinds of you know, benefits, all kinds of wisdom, all kinds of lessons uh, in this uh, 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 story of Nuh alayhi salam, chilling his age among the disbelievers that we don't have enough time to go through all of them. And uh, if I could just mention a few, that's what I did.
Exactly, like Karen. Inshallah, this will be the concluding question. It is sometimes said that um, the hardest of trials and tribulations are when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so much in abundance, whereas if he has deprived you of things and you're in need, it's easy to turn to your creator. Um, can you give us some words of advice so that we can really realize that the trials and tests in front of us also include uh, the abundance that Allah has given us? How should we recognize these as tests and not be blinded when they come in front of us? Uh, yes, uh, I think you're referring to a verse of Quran and Surah Al-Fajr when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, these are very beautiful verses that Allah says that when I test human beings, when I put them in trials, and when I give them some favors, they become puffed up and say, look, Allah has favored me because I deserve it, because I'm a good Muslim, because, you know, I'm close to Allah, so Allah has given me all of this. Allah says, I'm, I'm testing them. They think that they, I've, what I've given them, they deserve it. No, oh, you may not deserve this at all, but I have given you these favors. And then when Allah says that when I take away some things from them, when I take some job away from them, or when I take some uh, house from them, or other things I've given them, then they say that, oh, what? That, that Allah has uh, is now humiliated me, you know, Allah has humiliated me and Allah has really uh, punished me here. Allah, oh, neither the hardship that you're going through is a punishment, nor the favors that I gave you is a reward. Please understand, neither the favor you receive in life is a reward of your, uh, you know, work. And neither the punishments that you receive, uh, the, the hardships that you receive, it is not a punishment. The life of reward and punishment is next world. This world is all about tests and trials. Yes, there is some reward and some punishment in this world, but we have to understand two points of rewards and punishments of this world. First of all, rewards and punishments of this world is nothing compared to rewards and punishment of next life. Number one, is nothing significant. Number two, when Allah rewards us, even if Allah rewards us and punishes us, sometimes he does reward and sometimes he does punish. But what is important is how we are reacting towards that reward and towards that punishment. So if we properly show the reaction, for example, if Allah is rewarding us, we show gratitude, we show more submission to Allah, then the reward brings more rewards to us. And if Allah is, say, punishing us, punishment usually in this world is for people to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like pinching them, you know, to wake them up. So if Allah pinches people and punishes people, if, if they, uh, depending on their reaction, if they, as a result of that punishment, they turn to Allah, now this is a favor for them and they get much more reward for turning to Allah. But if they still do not get they are still stubborn and they are wrong, but they insist, then they get basically double punishment because Allah gave them an opportunity and Allah gave them a chance, but still they did not uh, you know, pay attention. So uh, this is a very important point that this life is all about tests and trials and hardships of this test and favor of this life, comforts of this life, luxuries of this life is a test. And if we receive some favors, we should not think that, oh, I deserve it. I worked so hard for it. I put so much sweat in it, and now I'm receiving all of this. You know, this is deluding. This is from shaitan. Thousands of, millions of other people may have worked harder than me and you. Thousands and millions of other people may be much more sincere than you and me, but they are living in a very, with a lot of hardships and sufferings in the world. And uh, you and I deserve and they, do, they don't deserve. And also, if we see hardships, you know, our hardships could be nothing compared to hardships of millions of other people. And, and so uh, it, the hardship is not a punishment. The hardship is a test and trial. And this attitude, if we really understand that every aspect of life is basically a test and trial, so the perspective of evil completely changes. And we... Towards circumstances, 
towards our creator, and towards ourselves, and towards other people. You know, then we will really change our uh, mind about our attitudes. That why I am, uh, you know, complaining so much about this test of life, or why I'm becoming too proud of myself. And uh, our test of life, test is an opportunity, a favor from Allah. Even test of hardship is a favor from Allah. So we should really think twice before next time we complain or we become disappointed or we become too proud or, uh, of ourselves and become selfish and become arrogant. You know, looking at life as a test and trial it really gives a beautiful and very holistic perspective of life and it makes us a more intelligent person it makes us a very productive human being it makes us a person who can really continue to do good inshallah in the path of allah and only seeking pleasure of allah and nobody else in that. Allah, Allah, Allah.